it's not true that most of the apartments in this condo building were renters. Most of the people in the condo building owned their condos. They were the ones fighting it out. They were the ones disagreeing. They were the ones who delayed fixing the building. So who's responsible? To start this off, um, uh, I got, uh, we were connected by Ben Burgess. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the wake of the Steven Crowder, uh, I believe, uh, debacle, or depending on your perspective, um, uh, wonderful phenomena. Um, uh, you reached out to Ben and said, I, I would like to uh, debate Sam and, uh, I was down. And so, uh, so here we are. Um, let me, uh, well, I'm not going to make you comment on the Steven Crowder, uh, thing because let's wow. move on from Steven. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. So, okay. So with this said, um, um, what, uh, what, shall we discuss libertarianism? Well, I mean, I'll just clarify, I'm not exactly a libertarian, and I know this is probably in the weeds for you guys, but um, I like to differentiate myself on that. I'm not an anarchist. I'm not a complete subjectivist, as many libertarians are. But sure, we can, we can discuss free markets, and we can discuss capitalism. We could discuss, debate them, or whatever you want to present it. Um, all right. Well, I mean, let, let's start with free markets, because sure. um, I... Um, of the the opinion that there's really no such thing as a free market mm -hmm. um, and that markets only uh, really can exist, uh, particularly in this day and age, but in general with uh, with a, you know, with a uh, uh, with governments, uh, essentially, that uh, oh. governments uh, create and structure markets and um, that there really isn't a, a free market. It's really just a question of, um, you know, uh, how the market is structured in such a way and who it benefits. Well, it, it, what's a question is, is what is freedom? That is, uh, what does it mean to say there's a free market? Uh, freedom is the absence of coercion. It's the absence of force. It's the absence of an authority that says this is how things have to be. And if you don't abide by the rules, we'd put you in jail or we shoot you or whatever. Um, free market is a system in which the governments exist, but the role of government is to protect uh, rights, to protect individual rights. It's to leave you alone, to make choices based on your values, based on your pursuits, based on your choices, uh, to leave you alone to do all that, and to protect you from other people who want to do you harm. So you need government because you need a monopoly over the use of force. But other than that, the government should leave you free. Uh, and that's what free markets mean. It means where the government is not dictating to you how you should live, what products to buy, how much to pay your employees, et cetera. But I mean, do you think we have free markets in, the, in this? No, I don't think we've ever country? really had free markets. Do you, I think we've you gotten close to it. I think it's gotten close to it. And I think it's possible to get free markets in the future. And I think to the extent that we get towards free markets, to that extent, we're richer. And 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 better off uh, and and more flourishing. I wanna I wanna circle back as to the who the we is in that uh, because that'd be great. Happy to. Um, but 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 where like um, what would you in look at the market that we have for let's say labor and um, mm -hmm. uh, products and whatnot, and explain to us like what you perceive as the lack of of freedom there and what you think is obviously uh, supported and structured by the government, but still represents freedom. Oh, there's massive amounts that, of lack of freedom in labor markets, for example. Minimum wage is a lack of freedom. Uh, requiring employers to play uh, benefits is a lack of freedom. The, the restrictions on firing and hiring, uh, many of the discrimination laws are a, an example of a lack of freedom. Any intervention of the government in a voluntary activity, in a voluntary exchange between two individuals uh, that, is, that is not coerced, that is not um, you know, illegal, but uh, What do you is, mean by illegal? I mean- Yeah, I mean, I mean the, uh, only thing, the only thing that should be- Labor laws are, is are the law. That's are not fraudulent. Law. That's not fraudulent, let's That's say. That's not fraudulent. Yeah. Okay, so um, I mean, what about things like uh, tax breaks or what about, um, you know, uh, what about 
I don't know. Well, I don't think they should be tax a, breaks. I, I think that it, if, if you're going to have a if you're going to have a tax system, taxes should. I mean, taxes should be flat, and they should be as close to zero as possible, and they should be simple, and everybody should pay exactly the same. There should be no breaks. There should be and, no and, you know, corporations taxes. and corporations at the end of the day don't really pay taxes. Uh, they pass it on to consumers and they pass it on to employees. So corporate taxes make zero sense from anybody's perspective because the economics of it is workers pay corporate taxes. It's just a hidden employment tax. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I don't I don't think that's necessarily the case. And, but um, every economic study out there shows that at the end of the day, the corporate tax is either paid by consumers in higher prices or by employees in lower wages. Uh, there is no such thing. Shareholders pay very little in corporate taxes. Very well, shareholders, little. shareholders. Uh, that and who pays? The there is no such thing um, as a corporation. It's well, just a nexus I mean, of contracts, right? No, I mean, the uh, corporations um, will will pay taxes on the on on exchanges of goods. They will actually pay money to the government. You're suggesting that they just pass on all of those expenses. They may. Um, but there is no uh, such thing as a corporation, Sam. Corporations are just people, right? So who, who, which are the people within the corporation that actually pay the tax? Well, the entity, the entity. But the, but the, the entity, the, the, the cash sitting in the bank account of the entity is owned by shareholders, right? So if, if, if it's either shareholders are paying the tax or they not, pass it on not to yet. It, it, well, but it's anymore, their property. It, Legally, it's their property. It is not their money yet until it's passed on to them and then in which case the government takes a part i mean no more than uh you know my money is matt's money right now because i'm going to pay him in the future it's not his money yet well it to the extent that you him. have a contract with him when i sure pay he him, has a claim against you but then i give money to the government as well at that moment they have a claim okay. against you as well okay. so it's in that All sense right. it's their money um and do you have and 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 so you don't think that there's any type of coercion that is set up in between this relationship that is a function of government, for instance, like um, protecting property rights, like building infrastructure, no. like uh, shielding those individuals who are surrounded by the corporation, uh, which is a legal protection mm -hmm. that the worker may not have. Um, you don't, do you see that as a government intervention? So let's take them one at a time, right? So protecting property rights, no, all the government there is doing is protecting something that's mine. It's not the government's, the government is just recognizing the fact that I created something and it is now mine and it's protecting my ability to use it. That's what property rights mean. Rights are not something the government grants you. It's something that is uh, is recognized, it's, it's, a, it's a principle of human interaction that the government is protecting. So rights are not things, rights are freedoms of action. All rights mean is it's a recognition that you are free, free of coercion, and that the government's job is to protect that freedom. And but, property is the same thing. You know, yeah. I, I own something, it's mine, the government is protecting my ability to keep it. Okay. So the government, it's not just a question of the government recognizing your right. It is a question of the government deploying its uh, power in defense of that right. And it's also defining that it's yours, right? It's not defining it's mine. Reality defines that it's mine. It's, it's well, a, wait, it's a wait, fact wait. that it's mine. You wait, know, when wait, I, if yeah, I put you something, Yaren, if I- Yaren, hold on for a second. Yeah, go ahead. If reality defines that something's yours, yeah. how is it that we, what is the use of, why do we have courts that very often have to step in to define whose this is. Um, because, because we often disagree about things out of reality, right? I mean, we have courts uh, to decide who, who murdered person X. Well, but even let's not though murder. In, let's rea well, about let me, let's just finish. in reality, somebody murdered him. Now it's a question of, can, do, we, do we know and there's disagreement about what happened? So there are disagreements about property rights and that's why you have a court system. But the fact is somebody owns this stuff, somebody created it. And therefore, it is of somebody's. But and, wait a second. Before but, you but, had government, before yeah, you had a government. Yeah. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> I, I want to just focus on this because, on one hand, you say it is we we know who owns this because it's reality. But in fact, you're also acknowledging that different people can have a different view of reality. So and we that, have disagreements. Yes. Okay, we have disagreements about yes. 
the reality of who owns this. Yes, and, and one person's right and one person's wrong, and that's the well, job but, of the courts, is to help right. us decide that. In other words, the government decides whose uh, ownership, who's going to have that ownership right. And it's not just a function of you built this. I mean, property exists before you get there, um, but, it, but it can be, uh, I created this. But we also have regimes for who owns the creation of that. Slaves built quite um, a lot, and, for instance. And, 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 the, and, and, and so government- That's not free markets, right? We're talking about what would happen in the free market. So the fact that slave built something is, is, I mean, the fact that slave existed is evil and an abomination, but it's that's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about under freedom, what happens to property rights. And what I'm saying is that you create, you you know, Matt, get you pay Matt a certain amount of money. That's his. That's a contract between you and him. You got to decide that Matt's worth X and he gets X. That is now all the government is going to do is say, okay, well, if there's a dispute between you and Max, the, the government's going to say, what did Sam promise Matt? What is there for Matt's? What is Sam's based on that promise? So the government is there to intervene when there's a disagreement between you. But the property rights allocation, the amount of money coming into you, and then the amount of money you give Matt is voluntarily decided between you and Matt. Matt has a property right claim against what you promised him. That's all. I mean, property rights are not that hard. They are you work, this is, you produce, but, and then you get stuff. Yaron. Yeah. My 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 father's an attorney, right? Who who whose entire career has been resolving these type of disputes. So yeah, it, it's, it's not, not easy. complicated, but it's not just a question. It is um it is the government that comes in and ultimately decides and shapes the property right. I mean um, uh, sure, and that's why we want government, we want a government that is focused on doing a good job shaping, not shaping property rights, but recognizing property rights, doing it objectively, doing it transparently, and not getting bogged down with the millions of regulations and controls and millions of things that we have today. Rather, if, if we lived in a simple free market world, uh, government would have one job, it would be relatively easy and things would be a lot simpler than they are right now. And your father would probably not have a job. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean your father, but there'll be a lot fewer lawyers in the world. Right. I, I understand. So you now what would that look like and how would that work? I'm very curious about that. If government was more what, in your, your aspirational view sure. of the world, um, what would, how would that work? How would we determine property rights? Let's say. Well, I, I gave you an example between you and Matt, right? So Matt would have a property right over what you paid him, right? The, 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 whatever contractually you promised to pay Matt, that's now his. And then if he went and uh, he bought a home, uh, there is a role for government to, to have a registry, but that's about it, of who owns what, so that there's not a lot of confusion about uh, you know, who owns a piece of land. But that's it. There's no, you know, he would buy it from somebody, now it's his because he acted to, to gain it. He could, as a consequence, do with it basically what he wanted. It was now his home. Could he burn plastic on it? Well, if, if the plastic was not harming his neighbors, if his neighbors were being harmed by the burned plastic, then they could sue him to prevent him from burning it. So, I mean, again, sue the, the, the common law is courts. all, what's that? Sue him in the government's courts. Well, I'm not against government. I, I believe no, governments are I necessary but, and governments are there to protect you from harm. So they would have to sue him in the government's courts and show harm in order to stop him. So governments are there to what? do this one thing. So I'm, I'm not against what the existence of governments. No, I think I, governments I understand are that, wonderful I'm things to get to when they're see, very limited. Uh, your own. I'm trying to yeah. figure out how your world is different than the one that we're existing in. Because when you say do harm, well, who defines uh, that it's uh, harmful? So because I'll give you Matt an example. I, wait a second. So Matt and I, I don't know without, I don't know, you know, sort of like uh, at birth that the, the in inhalation of the burning plastics are, are, are going to do me harm. And maybe, maybe there are some plastics that he's burning that actually wouldn't do me harm. Mm -hmm. The government writes regulations and makes determinations through the EPA, let's say, 
that it does uh, do harm. And that's the basis of the, the, my argument that his burning does harm there. How is to, this so world to the extent, to the extent, what our, yeah. how is that world different? How that's your fantasy world. How is sure. that different from our existing one? The difference is this, that uh, how much you pay Matt um, is not an issue of harm. How much you pay Matt is not an issue of harm. That's true. Burning plastic, if it really does harm, in some sense, your world and my world look the same, if there's harm, right? The way to prove harm would might be a little different, but at the end of the day, if there's harm, it will look the same. If you beat Matt up, if you whip him, right, you try to enslave him, uh, he brought up slavery before, then the government would intervene to stop you from doing that, both in your world and in mine, right? But where the difference happens is your choice of whether to pay Matt's health care or not. Now, I don't know if you're required to pay him because maybe you're too small of a business uh, to do so. I don't know how many employees you would need. But, but at some point, you know that there are hundreds, if not thousands of regulations that um, dictate how you and Matt should treat each other that have nothing to do with harm, have nothing to do with force, have nothing to do with coercion, have something to do with some kind of social policy. We believe that everybody should have health care, therefore the best way to do it is through employers and we will force employers to provide. That my government would never do. If you, if you want to pay Matt health care, you, can, you, can, you guys can negotiate. Maybe he prefers to get cash. Maybe he doesn't want you to pay his health care. You would have contractually you would decide with Matt on that relationship. Does your government give, does your government have corporations? In other words, does your government give certain benefits? So you, you raised the limited liability issue. So let's deal with the limited liability issue. I mean, the limited liability issue for the most part is a contractual issue. It is an issue that relates to the relationship between debt holders and shareholders. Basically, debt holders are saying, we're willing to lend you as a corporate entity money uh, in exchange for not, be, and, and, it, and we know by doing this, it's in the covenants of the bond, that we can't go after the individual wealth of shareholders. That's a voluntary decision that they made. Now, the government has recognized that, called it a limited liability corporation, but it's recognized a contractual dispute. Now, you cannot lend, you can choose, you can choose not to lend a corporation money because you think it's too much of a risk and you'd rather be able to actually go after the money of the shareholders. That's all it is. I mean, a big deal is made out of this, but limited liability basically is, is just a, a, a formalization of a market contract, a well, voluntary contract. But, but your own, that may be, there may be voluntary, you know, between the debt holder and the shareholder, but in terms of uh, the corporation and the public, there's no, the, the public doesn't volunteer for any of that. Um, I, as an S Corp, um, have certain protections that, Amongst people I've never even met before. Uh, so what are you protected from? From, from, protected from, from, from? from people outside. I'm protected from uh, my personal wealth being sued. Um, if, if, if I, uh, let's say, I infringe upon someone's copyright, I pay that all in pre-tax dollars. If they, uh, if they come after me and they sue me, so I am- uh, Put aside protected. taxes. Put aside taxes. I'm, I'm fine if, if you want to get rid of the limited liability that corporations have with regard to third Let's parties. Let's get rid of corporations. Not, with regard to third parties that do not have a contract with the company. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's an issue. Um, I would also. Um, I but the pre-tax stuff, let's put aside because, as I said, corporations don't actually pay taxes. Your employees do. But, well, I mean, they're well, pre-tax in uh, relative to the pass-through. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I wish everything was pre-tax. I'm not a big fan of taxes, I, particularly I, I not today. That. I, I right. don't doubt that. Um, but what, what of all the advantages that these entities get from society that workers don't necessarily get? Like, for instance, um, I am, you know, uh, I, I make my living on uh, the internet, largely uh, established by uh, the government that becomes a commercial vehicle for me. Um, I am a trucking company and I make my money uh, through having high quality infrastructure in a way that I take advantage of that other people either don't Get have it. the resources to take advantage of or don't. Okay. Um, there are, I mean, just the idea that I have that much more property uh, that needs to be protected by the government. 
um, is an advantage that I have over uh, these, uh, you know, when I get into a contract theoretically with a worker, et cetera, et cetera. So a few things. Um, I don't believe government should build infrastructure. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it has been necessary historically. Uh, so uh, in my world, you're asking about my world, right? Uh, the trucking company would not be writing off of what you had paid into uh, through it. It would, it would have to pay for its use of infrastructure through tolls or whatever to a private, to somebody who, who used the, who built the road right, through tolls or whatever. And, and I think tolling is pretty simple right now. I think all infrastructure could be built and be more efficient and be more productive on a, on a, on a private basis. Let me just say something about the internet. I mean, this mythology that the government built the internet is, 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 is truly nuts. And uh, it, while it's true that government funds, uh, funded university programs and academics and so on that ultimately created the basis on which the internet was built. Um, sure, but if the government is gonna fund something uh, like university research, it funds a lot of university research, 90% of it is garbage and you never see. Once in a while you see something that produces a result. And then we say, oh, the government did it. The government did very little of it. They funded randomly a bunch of research and some of it turned out to be good. Now the idea that research wouldn't happen if not for the government, is bizarre. Uh, research was happening well before government started funding it. But it's true that once the government starts funding something, it crowds out everybody else. That is, you don't expect private funding of university research if the government is going to do it. Uh, it, it you know, in the, some of the biggest innovations in all of human history happened at a time when government was funding exactly zero research. And that was during the 19th century in England, in the United States, where there was no government funding of any research. And we had, we got electricity and we got the steam engine where did that and wealth we come from, airplanes though? and so on. Matt, where I'm did, sorry. I missed where that. did that wealth come from? That It, it, it came from people producing and creating and building. And a little um, bit of like the sli uh, triangle slave trade and all of well, that. But the slave trade is wealth destroying. No, I mean, it created wealth. No, no, the wealth trade is wealth destroying. Let's be very clear about this. The South was poor. The North was rich. It's one of the reasons the, the North won. A slave slavery now, a a net, hold on for one slavery second. from an economic perspective is a net, you keep raising slavery so I, I need to answer this question slavery is a first of all immoral and evil and so on but it is an a net economically destructive force it is not a productive force for there would have been a lot more now, wealth on. created without slavery and indeed much more wealth was created post-slavery than it was pre-slavery so I know, I know the easiest thing to do when, when the 19th century is raised is to say, but it's all slavery. But that's just an economic right. and historical You're fallacy. Right. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to get, I, I want to stay on where we were. So I, let me, I, let me finish my point but, about the internet. So if, if because Matt interrupted me. Uh, the point is that the internet, yes, some infrastructure with regard to the internet was produced by government. That would have happened even without the government. That is, there's plenty of capital flowing into research throughout the, 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 the last couple of centuries without government flowing into it. So yes, so you would have to, you would, you would, you're using a private service. I assume YouTube is making a lot of money off of your show. All right. Good for so, them. Your own, let me, let me just address some of those. First of all, in terms of the slavery, I have interviewed at least a half a dozen authors who have written extensively that the Northern wealth was just as tied into the free labor uh, and and created the entire uh, uh, cotton um, uh, industry, and it had knock-on effects throughout the world, including in in Britain, because you had uh, zero input in terms of labor, and and cotton at that time was was incredibly labor intensive to produce, and when you have the ability to produce that labor for nothing, virtually nothing, um, it 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 has knock-on effects. But can I just say one thing about that, and then I'll I'll let you. Uh, you know, slavery's existed for from forever. We've had slavery. How about the triangle slave Matt, trade? All right, Matt, please. Slavery has please, existed. Matt, please. Slavery's existed forever. Um, the fact is that something different happened in the 19th century, and it wasn't some innovation with regard to slavery. It was the discovery and the and the and the use of capitalism. Um, and, and the fact that slave labor was, was mitigated. If you look at the, you know, if you look at the actual wealth created during the 19th century, almost none of it was created as a consequence of slavery. And I know there's a massive political agenda of painting the 19th century in that way 
but it is distortive and it is wrong. And if you look at the places in the world without slavery that has taken the same principles as capitalism developed in the 19th century in the United States, they developed wealth as fast, if not faster than the United States. So the slavery issue is, is just a massive perversion and distortion. And it's, it's sad to see that, that, that is, that is the critique of, 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 uh, you know, okay. a, a period that was. Listen, yeah. we're gonna uh, let's just table work. this because I've I've literally interviewed a uh, half a dozen people. On I this know, and, and experts at this who disagree. Experts at a political we will leave. political angle on it. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, I'm sure you haven't interviewed the experts that would mitigate that. That uh, would say I, the opposite. I, I have actually talked to many libertarians before who've made the similar argument, okay. uh, but without the the data. But nevertheless, let's go back to just even your description of the internet. Now, your argument is a counterfactual that's impossible for any of us to argue, which is the internet would have existed sure. even if the government hadn't spent all this money on research, which by the very uh, expense of it is indicative of it is research that they're going out there and they're laying a lot of bets on stuff that doesn't necessarily pay off, which yep. of course capital is highly reluctant to do. We see it in the context of the COVID, right? Like you would not have had uh, without the billions of dollars that were uh, pumped into these uh, private entities, without the uh, guarantee of distribution, even if this stuff doesn't work, you wouldn't have seen the COVID vaccines developed at the same rate. And you wouldn't have seen so many of them. Sam, none of that is true. Uh, I, I mean, I encourage people to look at the critiques of the entrepreneur state. I mean, you're referring to a book called the Entrepreneur State, which he lays out the case of well, maybe you're not, but the case that the internet is is funded by it was funded by government. I encourage people to look at the critiques of the entrepreneurial state and look at exactly what was funded, what was not funded, and what would have happened if free market, if if those elements of the that are still free in our markets hadn't stepped in and turned the internet into what we know of it today. I don't believe that's true of COVID either. Um, the fact is that uh, the only reason we have a vaccine today is the two companies were set up completely in the marketplace, not, not funded by government, uh, 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 Moderna and uh, BioNGen in Germany, set up trying to do uh, uh, mRNA, trying to create mRNA uh, technologies for all kinds of, of, and they were ready, they were ready. Moderna as as, was heavily funded by the NIH prior to this. No, it Biogen wasn't funded by the NIH. Again, research on, on which Moderna later took was funded by the NIH. Sure. Again, if the government is funding all research, you're not going to be able to find a company. It's not funding that, all research. It's funding, funding the research funding that is the longest shots. I mean, it, no, that's not true. You're wrong. It's exactly surely, the opposite. So give me, I'll give you one example. Wrong. I'll give you an example of exactly what you're saying. When, when COVID was, uh, when we discovered there was COVID out there, uh, there were many researchers and uh, and uh, and uh, scientists out there who wanted to jump in and try to get funds to do research and to develop drugs relating to COVID. You know, in March of last year, and yet they couldn't because the government bureaucracy was such that they couldn't get the grants. The grant authority wasn't there. They couldn't switch the authority from what they were doing to something else. The people who jumped in with the private sector. Now it's true that the government stepped in and said, we'll buy everything you to produce. As if in a free market, that couldn't have happened, right? As if in a free market, insurance companies don't have an incentive to do exactly that. I know you'll pull a face, but we can lay down a scenario where profit-seeking, profit-maximizing evil corporations actually seek to buy as many vaccines as they can because it's cheaper than actually paying for treatment in hospital, which is what would have happened in a free market. But look, we you can we can argue about the factual and the counterfactual. To me, the, the the deeper issue about free markets is not can we draw these scenarios? Because I think, you know, if you gave me enough time, I could draw you the exact scenario of what would happen under COVID and a free market, and a lot fewer people die than under this under the six hundred thousand that died in the world in which we have uh, the government involved in it. Uh, the government was an obstacle at every step of the way. It didn't do its job. It didn't test, screen and isolate, which is its job. It wouldn't let private enterprise produce tests until it was way too late. The CDC insisted on, on making the test themselves and it was a lousy test. And the vaccine distribution is a joke, centrally planned, 
was a complete abomination. Could have been much more efficient if it was done in the free market. We could go over all of these in great detail, and I could present a counterfactual, and you'll say it's counterfactual, so who cares? But the essential is this. I don't believe that the government telling you how, what research to do, I don't believe the government building infrastructure, I don't believe the government getting involved in our lives is moral or right or just. I, the only, government is force, government is coercion. The only time coercion and force is justified is in self-defense. And it has no business, the government has no business, the majority has no business in telling me what values to pursue, what education to get, what research to do. That are choices that need to be left to individuals and not to central planners. All right, Yaron, let me, yes. I'll, I'll get to the morality of this because, uh, you know, um, we may have a different uh, um, uh, value system, but there's a couple oh. of things I just wanna go back to what you were saying about the, the infrastructure. The government doesn't need to pay the infrastructure it uh they could they could charge the private entities could charge tolls mm -hmm. for for corporations who you would say at that point would then pass it on to take out of their workers pay and uh charge to consumers i would imagine right there's no reason why the toll is any different than a tax in that regard well any expense but, a toll but, is just an expense right okay. and and and, and there's right, no so reason enough. a tax is not any but, kind of expense right but somebody has we to also pay. know that one of the things that, and, and maybe it, it, this is just a question of immorality uh, to you, but we have roads that go to uh, just about everywhere in this country. Um, and we have, um, you know, for instance, you know, mail delivery, you can send a letter regardless of how remote you are. We even uh, have bridges to nowhere. To place. Right. We have bridges to nowhere, uh, it is true. Uh, there, there are definitely abuses within our system like there is in any system, uh, whether it's corporate or not. But um, the whole point is, is that uh, private corporations will only uh, seek profit. We know many, many stories. I'm sure you must know, uh, you know, uh, have heard stories of, of, of medical uh, inventions that are built that are maybe helpful to a very narrow amount of people and uh, their private corporations don't support it. I can tell you that uh, living in an area where there was a tremendous amount of Lyme disease, there was a Lyme vaccine that existed 40 years ago, that was about 70% effective, but it was just um, not profitable for the company at the time. And maybe there's one coming back now with some government uh, intervention and in support of that because uh, the profit motive is, is, is such that it wasn't compelling enough. Uh, so we're gonna see a Lyme vaccine in a couple of years now. That's, that's really that's bizarre, example. Sam, because if you think about the number of drugs that are being uh, researched and being produced and, and being investigated, and the number the FDA approves and the cost that the FDA, the, 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 the amount of money that the FDA causes a drug to cost these days, uh, the idea that it's private enterprise that is restricting drug supply and not the FDA and not government restricting drug supply is bizarre. And the fact is that, for example, I'll give you a quick example. There was a drug that, that uh, people who had arthritis swore by this because they live in excruciating pain and there was one drug that would actually actually reduce their pain. And the government stepped in and said, you know what, but 10% of you uh, have an increase in heart disease, therefore we were drawing the drug and it's illegal. Even if you choose to take on the risk of heart disease to reduce this excruciating pain, we the government have decided you cannot access this drug because we the government know what's good for you. So instead of, instead of me and my doctor making a decision based on risk that is personal to me, the central planner now dictates no, 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 10% risk is too much so the drug is off the market. The reason we have so few drugs in this country is because the FDA has an incentive to be super risk averse. It is gonna be blamed for any damage that happens, but never blamed for a drug that's released that actually gonna cure something or actually help us. Um, so, it, you know, this is all completely twisted. Profit motive is what gets us own, more drugs, it? not less what drugs. Is, what is that drug? Oh, I forget now, but it was it was like 10 years ago, it was on the market, it was a hugely popular drug and they withdrew it uh, because there was an increased risk, the 10% 10, uh, 10 increased risk of heart so disease in those receiving it. What do you do about the problem that we had with, let's say, OxyContin, where doctors were making these decisions with their patients, but because of the intense profit motive and because of, frankly, um, the 
in some respects, the failure of the FDA and the fact that our uh, uh, the statutory protections were not uh, strong enough, in my opinion, that we ended up having um, uh, this uh, use and ultimately abuse of OxyContin that uh, led to a massive opioid epidemic. So I, for one, believe that drugs should be legal. And if people want to abuse them, they have every right to abuse them. It's sad. But, and- no, but, 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 but. The point is the doctors gave point is, to, it, excuse me, wait, the yeah. doctors, you said it, this should be a decision between sure. the doctor and the patient. And I'm suggesting to you that a significant part of the overdose that we see in the addiction was not a function of people making a choice to be addicted or to abuse drugs, but was rather a, uh, a profit motive on the part of uh, Purdue and, 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 and subsidiary. Sam, have you ever had surgery? I'm just to, curious. If you've, have you ever had surgery and been have, in intense pain? I, I have been in intense pain. I have friends. And, and, and when the doctor let offered you, when the doctor offered you an let me, opioid, let me what just did finish. you do? Let me yeah, just go finish. Go ahead. The, uh, the profit motive drove these salespeople and this company to uh, make doctors believe that this was not addictive in the way that the doctors understood OxyContin could be, or that this type of opioid could be. I, you're shaking your head. I mean, I'm shaking my head because no doctor believed it wasn't addictive, and particularly they couldn't believe it after they actually saw their patients come back over and over and again to ask for more. So maybe initially you're right, but, you know, at some point you have to ask. We, we have a tremendous amount of corrupt doctors in this country. And we and have a lot of corrupt doctors an argument in this country. That a, to allow, a, listen, your own, just listen to what you've just yeah, said. In I know, the, I know. Two minutes. I know. You have said, we need to allow doctors to have an unfettered relationship with their patient. And all of these doctors knew they were giving a highly addictive drug to their patients and they turned the other direction I, which I, led to the to incredible i think, I think that's right but look actually so look, wh- so why am why i suggesting we, we should trust doctors yeah because i think we live in a system where we encourage people not to take personal responsibility doctors and patients not to take personal responsibility for 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 the decisions that they make and we encourage corruption I think because we have an SEC, for example, we have more corruption in financial markets. I think because we have an FDA, we have more corruption. Doctor. Let's say that we, we have more corruption among doctors because both- doctors because doctors now rely on guidance from above rather than making personal decisions. Now, let me just finish this point about oxycotton. Look, when a doctor offered me, this is years ago, when a doctor offered me opioids after back surgery because I was in intense pain, I said, you know. Maybe not, right? These are addictive, right? Uh, I knew that. You knew that. Everybody knows opioids are addictive. Everybody knows opioids are addictive. And and what we do is you we know shrug off. Who's ever we, been addicted to uh, that pain medication? Yeah, and they rationalize it away, but they knew what they were doing. They knew what they, they were getting into, really? and it reduced it reduced their pain, so it was excusable. And they could, uh, you know, they they could justify it to themselves because the pain was going away. But it doesn't take much research to discover. You just to do a Google search, uh, even five, six, ten years ago, and you would have discovered that any one of these drugs was addictive. We don't want. We don't want people to take personal responsibility. We don't want doctors to have wrong. personal responsibility about the decision that they make. Let me ask you this: We want to give is, that decision authority to some guiding authority like the is FDA. Is mRNA vaccines are they safe? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, if I Google it, I can find just as many oh, uh, hits. Well, no, yeah, but, but, it, but see, you're but use, saying that it's- Use you your mean, mind a little bit. You can differentiate no, no, wrong, between I, the listen, conspiracy theory nonsense you're wrong, you're and wrong. the reality. I just want to be clear on what your argument is here. Your argument is that the literally tens of thousands of deaths that we've had as a function of, of, of addiction that started with oxycotton, uh, cotton, you're arguing that the doctors were unscrupulous and the patients failed to understand the implications of the medicine they were taking. And, and, and that, okay, this is where our world yes. views really yes. diverge yes. because I don't believe that we can have a functioning society where every patient 
each has to know the implications of every medication they're taking so they can fact check the doctor who apparently is willing to be unscrupulous to the extent that they can because they're aided and abetted and encouraged to be corrupt by the existence so of I don't, government I don't, agencies. I don't disagree with you. That would, be, that would be a rotten world, but I don't believe that's the kind of world you would get. I believe that is a world that we have gotten because of the kind of role we've allowed government to take. We have delegated to government authorities so much of our personal responsibility, both as doctors, as pharmaceutical companies, and as individuals, that yes, you cannot just take the world as exists today and snap your fingers and yes, everything happens. Incentives matter. And when you create perverse incentives, which is what the FDA has created, you get perverse results. And that's what we got. And, you got, and you're getting the same with mRNA right now. The reason there's so much, uh, you know, conspiracy theories about this is because people have lost trust in our government. And you get one central authority saying, thumbs up, thumbs down. And, you know, we, we, we're living through that. It's, it's a sad and, and, and horrific state that we have right now. Well, we're but, not trusting scientists because scientists, I believe, but, be members of, the, of some you're kind of elite. You've just described the entire opioid epidemic, a, a, epidemic as a function of unscrupulous uh, uh I think it's a function drugs. of the system that we have today, which involves the FDA unscrupulous and unscrupulous doctors, doctors. yes. And right. ignorant patients. But you're so suggesting in the absence of the FDA and the government that everyone would trust Pfizer or that they would huh. all do the right thing because why what would the how would the incentive structure be different because think about what first of all think about what happens if you don't think about how you go out of business and how much you suffer when you go out of business if you screw it up it's a it's a big deal but but, but, but let's uh, wait a second let's, let's take that world that this this that because that's an interesting thing because I'm thinking about the builders of that building in uh Florida Sure. Now, maybe they would take a hit now uh, if we knew who they were. Uh, maybe they're still in business. But it also suggests that the way the corporations, that corporations, which we know, and you've made it clear, Sam. are just, wait a second, are just people who have a legal protection. Those people, 10 years down the road, they're gone. That boy, that CEO and sure, those, that's, that C -suite, that's why they're gone and they've profited from it. So if the company goes bankrupt because they, I mean, the Sacklers made billions. Yeah, they don't I have them. Any, they don't have those billions anymore. Oh, they, they do. Might, they no, they don't. They don't. Do. They don't. And they, they and, they, and they're do. gonna and they 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 were they pretty well off much even before this. I literally look, just interviewed the uh, the guy who did the story on the sacklers they very much do have billions of dollars but again i you know i don't think they are they are the only party responsible for what happened there and a lot of people are getting off the hook on it but you know well, I, then everybody gets off the hook like no, the point is you know there's life, no, life, there's no guarantee in life look you, we have the system you want or close to it and uh, a building inspector went into that building and returned every 10 years the government sent the building inspector into the building in miami and they still didn't get it they still blew it up no, and i would private, argue the private the private owners of that building did not yeah, respond but that's to the it. point the point is this that in a, in a in a world in which the government doesn't have a building inspector let, let me finish this thought and then i have to run unfortunately right because i don't have a lot of time okay. let me finish this thought in a world in which i imagine there are many people that have a clear interest in keeping the building from collapsing Certainly the owners of the building and the people who live there. Now, look, mistakes are going to happen in any system. Mistakes are going to happen, right? I, no system is going to guarantee that no buildings ever collapse. No system is going to guarantee that no people ever get sick from a drug or sick from food that they eat. But I like the incentives of the building owners, the people who own the condos, more than I like the incentive of the building inspector from the government. <laughs> now, it didn't work side, in this case. Man. It Not didn't work in this case, but I said that sometimes some sometimes things are going to go. But you know what? I also like the incentive of in a free market, not in the world in which we live now, where everybody hides behind the government uh, of the insurance company that insured that building, because um, they've got a lot of claims that they're going to have to pay now and they're going to take a big hit. They in a free market, they would have sent an inspector. Now, in the world we live in today, they don't. 
because they were lying the government inspector, which probably was not a good idea. No, because the, the government, government inspector made well. it quite clear that there were problems there. The not, private inspector, I'm sorry, 20, you're wrong. years ago when you're the wrong. building was you're built wrong. with a, with a basis. I'm, I'm sorry. Right? The private inspectors also, the engineering company that was in there, the private owners of that building made the decision not to fix it. Now, were there stricter government uh, regulations? Then, who is then, then why are we worried about it? Then they made a decision and they suffered the consequences. Because there's a hundred, uh, there's a hundred- People who made people. a decision, who made a bad decision to suffer the consequences of it. I'm not justifying the building collapsing. I'm saying that people make decisions. If I make a decision to walk into the street without walk, looking, uh, should the driver, uh, be be limited in his capacity to drive because I made a stupid decision. The point is that there are, you know, what you want is for the people who make the decision to suffer to benefit from the consequence of their actions. If I make a decision to take Oxycontin, knowing it's addictive and I become addictive from it, that's my problem, not yours and not mine and, and not no, anybody else's. I, think I believe got, people should pay for the mistakes that they make. I, I, I think that we have gotten to the 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 rub between us that for you uh the morality as far as i can tell um is that consequences if they are can be directly attributed to a mistake that individuals make are just that's just the way it is for me my morality i guess to the to use it your term is that society should try and diminish and mitigate the suffering of other people. Uh, yeah, that's a big difference between us. My view is if you want to mitigate the suffering of other people, you should be able to do that freely. Uh, to force me to help you mitigate the suffering of other people because it's your value, but if it's not mine, that is immoral. It's immoral for you to impose your morality on me, even if you're in the majority. I, I have to say too that every well not every but many of the conversations i've had with libertarians the 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 the, the ones who are, are are more coherent and i count you as one of those ultimately comes down to there's a certain frustration that they have mm -hmm. that the vast majority of americans um subscribe to the idea that society should mitigate uh mistakes that people make you know like things like and and that uh, society should be designed that way and that it is frustrating for people like you to live in a country where most people the, uh, feel that way. Oh, absolutely. We try to educate people not to feel that way. But, but yes, I would like to live in a place where people are free to aggregate their efforts together to mitigate problems that they see fit on a voluntary basis. I don't believe in coercion. I just don't believe in force. I don't believe... Anybody has a right to force somebody else Except to, do to protect they property. That is protect. I'm all for protection. I'm protecting your life. Police should protect your life. I don't. I think property is and an property. extension of your life. But life oh. is property is part of your life. I mean, you can't separate but, but the wait, two. But wait, if I need to produce stuff in order life. to live, what about government that? protecting your life if you um, if the building falls? Like, because not every one of the 150 people who died in there made that decision. Sure. The children didn't. They were shareholders of a of a building, and they were they had represented. Oh, the shareholders are owners, and they're responsible for the decision making that they the decisions they make. But um, it's to protect your life from somebody else using force against you. It's not from nature. I mean, a hurricane might blow through here. I, I'm I, I'm in Puerto Rico right now, and you know the guy. I I don't expect the government to protect me from the hurricane. Um, I do expect the government from to protect me from somebody trying to. Uh, shoot me in the street. Did the government help uh, putting electricity back on there? Well, the Probably. government destroyed the electricity grid and then it rebuilt it in, in as bad of a shape as it was originally. So the next hurricane will go out again. Was that drug, incidentally, people are saying it was Vioxx. Is that the case? Vioxx, yes. Thank you. It was Vioxx. Yeah. My understanding is that was a, 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 a recall that they did uh, themselves, but it's uh, but maybe that's incorrect. No, it's the FDA forced them Vioxx to. Vioxx had been taken by some 4 million Americans out of those patients who took Vioxx. The arthritis drug may have caused approximately 140,000 heart attacks, resulting in an estimated 60,000 deaths. This is according to an FDA investigation. I mean, may have, may have caused, um, notice may, I mean, imagine if they did that with the vaccine, may have. And, uh, and also, um, why can't I make that decision?
Why can't I make a decision whether I, I mean, want to I want to take the risk wrong. of the heart attack and You're reduce a much smarter guy than that. most people who have the ability to assess all no, these things. I don't drugs. I don't assume that. I actually have a high opinion of most human beings and think that they can make decisions for themselves and I think it's a it's the, the philosopher you king mentality the own. philosopher king mentality of a of Plato where they you get to decide for other people what's good for them. You're right. You have kids? I do. I have yeah. two boys. I mean, you know, when you have little kids, it's a little bit tough to be doing all that medical uh, reading, right? It's absolutely tough. It's absolutely yeah. tough. And 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 part of the reading is finding a good pediatrician so that you somebody you can trust who's not going to deceive you. And that's not easy. I'm not saying life's easy. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. No, it's not about fingers crossed. It's not about fingers crossed. But okay, right, well, I need. I know, do need to run. I know. I appreciate, I appreciate it. I appreciate the time and so I appreciate much. the stability. Thank that you. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Bye-bye. Bye.